Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends and piano lovers. Today we are here together uh, with Boyan Vodanicharov and Martin Lingir on the third Johnny session. The idea of the Johnny sessions is actually to, to have a platform for pianists uh, to be able to play, to perform, but also to, to talk and to think about the world behind the notes. Um, today, the theme will be improvisation. And um, of course, Boyan Vodenicharov is a brilliant pianist who uh, was um, laureate of the Queen Elizabeth competition in 83, uh, also won several competitions, but besides this, it's, it's, it's uh, mostly a pianist with a really broad range of repertory and interests going from the ancient pianoforte instruments through today's uh, creation with his own compositions or with his own improvisations. So that is a very interesting uh, personality in my view to be able to share with us uh, his impressions and thoughts tonight. And then we in the uh, Johnny sessions we always try to mix generations and we invited a uh, pupil of Bayern, which is Ma Martin Lingier. And um, he has a nice um, CV now because uh, what's happening is uh, in his compositions and in his improvisations he is now uh, able to write for an orchestra and his cello concerto will be performed next month, if I'm right, uh, by uh, Julien uh, uh, Le Ferrier, Le, um, who is the, the cello player who won a Queen Elizabeth competition lately. Um, besides that, he will also be in a kind of a masterclass uh, mentorship uh, be followed and tutored by uh, Utfus, the great uh, Hungarian composer. So we're very happy to have both here tonight with us. And uh, since it's about improvisation, we of course prefer to start to listen and to play. So there will come now five short pieces of uh, improvisation, which it was recorded this afternoon here in uh, the Johnny Giant Green studio on a beautiful Fazioli piano. So welcome to all of you, and I hope you enjoy tonight's evening. <laughs>
Yes, we just listened to the first improvisation of Bojan Vodinichav. Um, well, first of all, thanks for a lot being here. It's really a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> pleasure is mine. And, um, well, I have a lot of questions, but maybe let's go back a little bit to the past. Uh, and in the world of the classical music, being an improvisator is not so evident. It's not so common. Um, was there a moment that you decided that what you did for yourself at home was also possible to mix into programs in recitals uh, on stage in this classical world? Well, that happened late in my life. In the beginning, I just improvised because I, since I remember myself, I, I needed to do it. When I was a kid, I would do it all the time and then my parents will yell at me like, practice, you idiot, don't waste your time. And it, this kept like that for years. My teachers would go on the same logic. Don't waste your time with silly things, you know, practice your repertoire. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, if you need to improvise, you cannot help it. You, you just you keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And this is the wonderful thing about it, that you don't have any justification for doing it other than that you need to do it. You feel like doing it. You want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's curiosity. It's sheer curiosity, mm -hmm. which is the, the number one vehicle I think it's the most, I mean, I, I will make a propaganda of, of my choices, but curiosity is the simplest and the most complex vehicle of our being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 to me, it's nothing less or nothing more than sheer curiosity to see what's inside, what a piece of music is made of. Like kids would open, would break their toys to see what's inside. It was similar. But of course, in during this uh, development or, or of uh, this world for your own, uh, it doesn't mean that it's easy to share it to others. It's not the same to open yourself up to this inner world of improvisation. So when did that or why did that change then? Well, it's not easy to uh, place it in a concrete, um, let's say, social context because people had been reluctant, like, when I say people, those of us that declare them th themselves as uh, classical music, uh, you know, lovers, they, they had been extremely hostile towards improvisation. Like the classical music world declared improvisation almost as a dirty word for a long time, mm -hmm. for probably half a century. While if you, if we look back at the 19th century, it was always always there. This was the principal form of mm -hmm. music making. But for one, one reason or another, it went out of the landscape, out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, often, uh, uh, like, uh, like more conservatively oriented classical musicians would, 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 be, would look down at it as, as a kind of a activity that is not respectable. And is that twisting now? Do you feel that there is opening up more possibilities? I don't or know. I, don't know. I really hope it will change because, first of all, it's extremely silly to think that composing in real time is a waste of time. <laughs> composing in real time is a it's a discovering time. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you can compose in real time, you're making connection between the act of composition and the act of playing. And I'm wondering what those classical musicians that despise the improvisation think about the connection between composing and improvising is it about uh, is it about being um, self sufficient and declaring yourself a superior or is it about sinking your hands into the matter mm -hmm. 
-hmm. making your own bread by putting your exactly. hands into the <laughs> dough. Which yeah. baker is better? The one that has the biggest uh, uh, sign on top of his door or the one who is ready to sing his hand mm -hmm. hands into the dough? Mm -hmm. Well, beautiful image. Uh, Martin, for you, is, is it, uh, as a, a young boy, uh, so to speak, is it true that uh, you, find you found more um, ears from your teachers of for what you experienced to be able to improvise and more play? More ears. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, um, yes, I, I have been also improvising all my life. It was probably the first uh, way I played on the piano was mm -hmm. through improvisa um, improvisation because uh, as a child I couldn't read notes and so I also kept doing it uh, all my life mm -hmm. and indeed I think it's a great uh, tool to help to develop your ear mm -hmm. um, because you are searching and, and you are searching for certain harmonies, certain melodies but also certain sounds mm -hmm. um, and it can indeed help to de develop your ear so a lot. So it influences the written music you play also? Yes, yes, for me actually my composition came after improvisation mm -hmm. because in improvisation the process is similar. Of course it's not the same thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I it is a different, uh, a different process. Prof profession. Or <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, But um, there are similarities. So mm -hmm. um, the process is indeed similar because you are creating mm -hmm. um, at the moment. The, the moment of improvisation is much shorter than when you are composing. You, sure. have, you can have one year time for mm -hmm. a piece of mm -hmm. you know, 15 minutes. So you can rethink it. Okay. But for me, it helped a lot, improvisation, because you have to decide very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, that's different. In composition, you can have, a it's a you can have days to think about yeah. one phrase, but you have to decide. Mm -hmm. on the spot and uh, this is something which helped me a lot okay well let's now um, decide to listen on the spot to next improvisations of uh, Vojan Vodinicar <laughs>
Yeah, Boyan, the amazing Boyan, fantastic <laughs> piece of music Thank you, you just uh, played. And um, of course, when there's so many material going on, uh, it's instant music, it's, it's intuitive uh, music, uh, but of course, um, yeah, it's prepared somehow also. So my question, how you prepare to play an improvisation? Well, you know, I, I have this friend of mine, wonderful jazz pianist, Antoni Donchev, Bulgarian jazz pianist. After one concert with improvised music, uh, a journalist asked him, how long have you prepared for the recital? And he said, about 30, 35 years. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. So it's a condensation it's everything, of everything, everything that you have been through, mm -hmm. which is stocked in your inner ear as a, as a, as a vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, 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 uh, there, there is a lot of, of uh, experimentation that you need to do in order to build up this vocabulary. But also, there's this uh, uh, the, the, the act of dealing with the form also. You cannot leave it to chance. You, you have your intuition tuned into the perception of form. And there, it's absolutely everything that you have been through in your musical experience that plays a role. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, th we say that it's intuitive, but so is everything that we do. Every scientist will claim that intuition is by far more important than the stocked knowledge. Mm -hmm. Every philosopher will tell you that intu intuition is the final goal. So the whole thing is to train your intuition mm -hmm. to do a decent job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then let it do the decent job. And, and uh, is there for you personally a another type of mindset when you play like tonight improvisation or a sonata of Brahms as far as the sound is concerned there isn't much, there, there isn't such a big difference because in both cases you have a sound image that you follow whether the material that creates the sound image comes from the composition of the this or that composer or it is your own stocked in your inner ear uh, in your me in your m emotional memory uh, sound image mm -hmm. it's still about intervals rhythms chords forms shapes uh, I I the difference is in the in the sense of responsibility mm -hmm. it's one thing to say what you think it's another thing to quote a it's famous philosopher okay. you, you yeah. need to know what you're doing when you're quoting a famous philosopher and when you express your own thoughts, you also would be nice to know what to you're know. doing, but there is less weight on your shoulders, because I see, I see. if you say a silly thing, it's only you. Yeah. Well, if you say silly thing on behalf of Brahms, that's terribly uh, oppressing, okay. and you don't sleep for weeks after <laughs> that. Okay. Uh, yes, maybe the same question for you, Martin. Um, uh, okay, In grosso modo, it will be the same answer, like we have this vocabulary from years and years, but still uh, the flow of being on the spot and inventing on the spot, how would you describe that? I think it's very hard to describe, but I, I think it's actually similar with other acts which we do in life, to name something very, very silly, for example, when you are cooking, you are also using your tools mm -hmm. and, and you are making something or when uh, when somebody is painting some just when you draw something what what is in your mind i think the process is probably uh, similar and is it not uh, um, a way of feeling more free than in other situations i think at the end in any art form you should aim the same freedom mm -hmm. so of course, in to to feel free in improvisation, it is also a long road mm -hmm. because you need to practice a lot and you need to uh, forget what you practice. Mm -hmm. But I also think when you play a masterpiece, of course you must assimilate mm -hmm. everything. Uh, and uh, but at the end, you you ref reflect the composition, and through the reflection, you should feel free because if you are not feeling free, what you are say saying, the composition will not sound it won't be as it should be. Yeah. So I think in if you want to master any act, doesn't matter which form, mm -hmm. at the end the feeling of freedom is the same, I think. I see. Okay. So then we go uh, continue to listen to the last uh, improvisation of Boyan Vodinicharov.
Well, we are talking about improvisation tonight and um, the improvisation action, the, the, the way of playing uh, unwritten music instant on, on the instrument uh, was not so easy to, to do or was not so accepted in the academic, uh, medical, academical atmosphere since decades. Um, my question is actually, do you think these days that there is an evolution, that we have opened up, that we have, we are able now to, again, coming back to something natural, to understand music in a better way via the improvisation? Well, at least improvisation is, um, is taking place in, in the conservatories for the last 20 years. We can see courses of improvisation reappearing. Of course, the musical language is so vast that to say improvisation doesn't mean anything. You, you have to specify in what language you're improvising. But the act of improvisation is an extremely powerful tool to learn music. So it's a good thing that it, we, we see it coming back to the to the because to the when we talk about improvisation immediately we make this connection jazz no no uh, d d of course it, it's that that's the problem that uh, it existed only in the field of jazz and somehow it created the feeling that if you improvise you're a jazz musician but we forget that music was improvised for thousands of years before the first music sign was put on paper we had a huge amount of musical culture before writing music appeared and even today if you say if you take the the entire picture of the music that exists in our planet all the ethnic music all the non-classical genres you have millions of millions of forms of of improvised music happening all the time mm -hmm. so what are we talking about and also um yes since years thousands of years it's passing on from master to to pupil it's some some um gesture also very beautiful gesture to pass on the language exactly that that's right and it's it's happening on a human level if mm -hmm. if you improvise together with your student you you are you are sharing knowledge on an extremely human level and there is no there is no such hierarchy of no. professor mm -hmm. uh, pupil mm -hmm. there is just the common ground of music making Yes. Well, we have uh, <laughs> your student, Martin. Um, tell me something, or tell us something, about this connection during such a class of improvisation you experienced. Yes, actually, I already improvised before uh, my lessons with Bojan, but it was the first time in my classical uh, piano <laughs> education that it came together, that it was not separated. Because mm -hmm. before I use it in, in a jazz form and I didn't realize that it could be brought together mm -hmm. <laughs> somehow. And through these lessons with Boyan, um, yes, it, it helped me to, to open my view on the, on the composers because the most of the composers who, who are played nowadays mm -hmm. in the concert halls, they were improvisers. So mm -hmm. I think it's for sure helpful to know what it is to improvise if you are imp interpreting mm -hmm. uh, those uh, those pieces and for me also it added I, I think I have been always a searching person so as a musician and through this improvisation in classical music I've somehow found my way uh, mm -hmm. into composition and I'm not sure if it would have happened if uh, if it would have been divided al always. So for you, improvisation is was a, a condition to get to mm, composition? Maybe not a condition. I think it composing was something what was already inside there. me. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow, because of the circumstances, I, I didn't start with it okay. seriously yet. But because of improv improvising in a more classical style, mm -hmm. um, it opened in this way. Mm. Which, which I continue now. Well, it's a perfect moment to switch to music and to open all of our ears to your wonderful world of improvisation. So now we will listen to five short pieces. They are just invented on the spot. So thanks <laughs> for your playing and for your talking. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, thanks, Martin, for this beautiful music. Um, yeah, it's again the ending of our session tonight. So, thanks a lot, Boyan, for the of being here. It was really great pleasure. Thanks for having us both. I had wonderful time rediscovering <laughs> my dear friend Martin with his beautiful harmonic language, which is something of his own. So, so specifically his. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thanks both of you. Um, well, also, um, this was a huge promo session for all pianists watching. Just go to the piano and improvise. Free yourself and it's a new world coming open or an old world coming open. Anyway, it's something will happen. And uh, tonight also uh, I'd like to thank uh, our technical crew. We have Fias El Harak, we have uh, Jacques Segers, Jonathan Troch. And um, of course, you, dear public, we were very happy to receive all your nice comments. Uh, you were all over the place watching with great attention. It's really, really a pleasure for us. And um, this session would not be possible without the support of the Flemish government. So thanks a lot for that. And then before ending, I'd like to invite all of you for our fourth session and it will be the 3rd of April. At that moment we will invite um, Nicolas Kende together with Brecht Falkenaars, two pianists who will perform Brahms and Schumann. So welcome again and thanks for watching tonight. See you. <laughs>